Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. And today we're going to learn that when you're starting to lose weight, but you don't really see it yet, that body dysmorphia can be really holding us back and we then go into a loop. So we're going to learn today about how to overcome um, the mindset piece when our bodies are changing. So today we're interviewing both Daisy and Rebecca. Excited to bring them in so we can have a three-way conversation about this topic. Let's get into it. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. I struggled a lot with not feeling like I'm making progress and not seeing the progress on a day-to-day -day basis. And when I put those photos together, as I'm putting those photos together side by side, my daughter is like, you've lost weight, mommy. And I'm like, wait, she's seen something I'm not seeing. I, I didn't see it as much, even looking at the pictures individually until I set them right next to each other. And then I saw like the subtle changes. And that was only photos of the last 15 pounds I've lost. Um, that doesn't include, I don't have accurate before photos of the 53 pounds I've lost. But I struggle a lot with not seeing myself and my current form and before, especially in photos, that if I'm not positioned exactly right, I see the former me, which was obese. And <laughs> it's, it's been quite a struggle for me, actually done a little bit more looking into a lot more of it since I've talked to you, Danita, um, and have found a few things. And I, it's probably, honestly, my own insecurities. It's not as uncommon as I thought it was. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's actually quite common. Absolutely. I'm going to just introduce Coach Daisy really quick to the call so you guys know Coach Daisy. So Coach Daisy, I don't know if you know, has lost over 100 pounds naturally on her own through just nutrition and workouts was able to drop this weight. So she has a very similar experience about what you're going through. So welcome coach Daisy to the call. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's really amazing the way the brain works, right? Because as we're watching ourselves in the mirrors, we know we're working our asses off. We yep. know we're putting in all the good food. Right, we're balancing our macros, we're doing our squats, we're doing the deadlifts, but why isn't my body changing in front of my eyes? Yeah. Why didn't I lose 50 pounds five minutes ago and why can't I see that right now? Because here's what's happening. Your body is making subtle changes every single day. And as we're looking in the mirror, right, yeah. we are seeing ourselves we may see the subtle changes, but we're not seeing them side by side, like you said in the photo. So yeah. for me, my personal journey, I started out at 305 pounds when I finally started weighing myself. I don't even know what my top weight was. I was at 305 pounds when I first started weighing myself. And I can assure you that there are some days I will look in the mirror and I will still see that 300 pound girl. But yeah. I also know that, that's my mind playing a trick on me. Yep. So what I did most recently, this is one of my favorite tricks too, bar none. So if any of you are on a weight loss journey or a fat loss journey, please do this trick. Do yourself a favor. Buy yourself a pair of goal pants. Goal shorts, whatever. Because you will astound yourself the day that you go to put those pants on and they fit. And that is a physical representation of all of the hard work that you're putting in because you know that when you were going through your journey, that, that didn't, those didn't fit. So you take a picture of them, you're trying them on. When you first buy them, they're obviously too small. And that can be a hard picture to take, right? I'm not going to lie. That's not an easy picture to take because you yeah. look at the pants, you're like, these could totally fit. And you're like, no, just kidding. Yeah. But in two months. In three months, however long it takes, when you can finally put those on, that's a trophy that's worth celebrating. So yeah. you get so excited. Yeah. No, I mean it's been it's been a process, and I started when I. Oh wow. Nice. 
That is. I started, I started at last May. I was at two hundred and thirteen pounds up to one sixty. So it's been it's been a long process, but I've just done subtle and consistent lifestyle changes, just little little habits that I've changed so that I can keep it off this time because I've lost weight before in decent amounts and not in a healthy way, and I just gained it all back. So I've been doing things like I've increased proteins and I I do protein powder and cream like half and half with my coffee in the morning instead of creamer. So I'm getting that pop of 15, 20 grams of protein right away in the morning with my coffee. Before and after pictures I sent Danita is only the last 15 pounds that I've lost since February. So I couldn't take a picture of myself <laughs> before and I, I kind of regret it. I should have. I didn't take a before picture before I started this process, probably mostly because I didn't believe that I would actually succeed. But here I am. <laughs> and That's huge, right? It's the belief. It is. It's the belief that we're all wrapped up in our own heads, right? We're all, yes. all stuck in our own mindsets. And that's the same thing when we're looking at our bodies and saying, oh my gosh, I'm still that same girl. Yeah. You're not. you're not even close to the same person that started this journey. You I know. So much. Not only are you growing your muscle mass because you are losing the fat, but you're growing in your mindset. You're growing in your habits. You're growing in your entire life. You're you're yep. busting out of this comfort zone. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so <laughs> to let that mind control how you see yourself. Yeah. Here's another trick. Do you yeah. have self-love confirmations on your mirror? I don't. I keep thinking about putting them up and I, I've got other random things around, but I, I need to do that. <laughs> I, 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 really highly encourage it. I highly encourage it, especially as you're looking into your mirror and that's where you need to have one of your most favorite. I actually have my yeah. beautiful booty band tank top on favorites. That's one of my favorite self-love confirmations is just be beautiful because it's so true there's yeah. only one you no one can ever be more you or than you so why wouldn't you want to be the best you possible and the best you possible is quite simply a happy and loving you yeah yeah right. and i've struggled a lot with that over the last year I've, I've been through a ton in the last year just the weight loss but i've also ended a long-term relationship that is threatening to take one of my un, like not biological children but he's been in my life for eight years so a lot of that stuff and um I started a new job a month and a half ago as well and it's it's been a trial but I've I've come a long ways and a lot of it is is learning how to recognize like yes I have all these issues but being able to recognize them and recognize when they're happening because I've been unofficially diagnosed with ADHD and CPT, CPTSD. Um, and I also have mild anxiety and depression. Go figure you can have both of those. Just recognizing when that stuff is happening, when those triggers are happening. And, you know, I, I don't always know that it's what's going to trigger me, but recognizing that that's exactly what's happening. So it's, there's been a lot involved in, in addition to, you know, childhood trauma and not, never feeling like I'm good enough and, you know, trying to change my mindset on that where I am, <laughs> I am good enough and I'm just trying to be the best me, obviously, but it's, it's crazy. And how, how do you lose 53 pounds and only an inch off your chest? It's insane. I've lost nine, eight to nine pant sizes and only an inch off my chest. Well, I'm going to consider I, you lucky because that was the first to go for me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but that, that's where I, I struggle with like clothing, where if I wear something loose enough and they'll fit my chest, then I don't see all the other progress and it kind of, it messes with me. So I've been wearing a lot of more form fitting clothes, which makes me feel better. But <laughs> it's those cute shirts I have a really cute flowy crop top that I want to wear but I haven't been able to, to get myself to wear it because it covers up 
the thin parts of me and it makes <laughs> makes me feel a certain way. I don't like it. Up. I like it. I think my daughter said I look like a cowgirl in it. <laughs> like, so what I'll, could I'll, you pair it with? What's that? What could you pair it with that would make you feel differently about it? Maybe spandex shorts, maybe some denim shorts. I put, it with den- I put it with denim shorts. I don't know. I just haven't been able to to do it yet. I'm getting close. I'm getting really close, and just trying to figure out how to to love myself enough to to just go for it. I relate to that. I do. Yeah. So originally, I'm from Alaska, right? And I moved to Florida yeah. about five years ago. I had never worn a two piece swimsuit in my life. When I moved to Florida, I didn't even own a swimsuit for about a year. And then I finally stepped foot onto my beach in a two piece. And I was terrified. I was terrified. Yeah. I thought everybody on that beach was going to judge me. I thought everybody on that beach was going to stare at me and make fun of me, you know, like they used to do in high school. And you know what happened? Nobody cared. <laughs> Nobody I know, cared. I, just, I did the same thing Everything. It was about two years ago. It's crazy because it was about two years ago the first time I wore a bikini and I haven't gone back. Even at my heaviest, a bikini is what I wore. Um, yes. And it was it was Miami. I went to Miami and I realized that nobody, like I looked around and nobody cared. I'm like, I put on that bikini and walked out on the beach, whatever. But, and I've had to, I've had to completely reshop like three or four times in the last year to, to have clothes that fit, which I know is a good, a good problem to have. But I'm not even sure I own a one piece right now because... I'm just not going to put it on. <laughs> I know. I do have one. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> I, I might have one, but I've never worn it. I was in a situation where I was like a kid's party or whatever, but people wear bikinis at kid's parties anyway, so I don't really care. Um, but I've, I wear shorter shorts than I've ever worn. I'm like, I'm older, and I wear shorter shorts than I've ever worn in my life. Like, I'm going, oh, I'm wearing the booty shorts now, and I'm like, it's, it feels good though. I've always been built a little bit different. So even when I was, you know, 120 pounds soaking wet, my arms, like I couldn't buy the size small shirts because my arms wouldn't fit in. I grew up on a farm. I was always working hard and my thighs are the same way. Like in the last, since in those the 15 pounds lost, I've lost one inch off my thighs. But I've lost over four inches off my waist. Like, my thighs haven't changed much at all. So that's a struggle a little bit with fitting into some of the stuff, is that finding finding them outfits or clothes that are built correctly for my body, because it's not like anybody else's. So, And I feel I mean, like that's that just women in America have in general just from brand to brand size to size I can be a size 14 in one brand and I'm a size 8 in another you know what I mean and so it literally varies so vastly that I feel like that's a big part of the you know I'm just gonna say mental illness that we have surrounding this fitness industry right now and the diet culture that we have in America right now because of the sizing issues that we do have and yeah. we're all told that we need to fit into this specific size or we're not normal, right? We're yeah. not average. When in reality, that one specific size could actually fit probably every woman in America if we <laughs> right <buy> brand. <laughs> well, and I've always, like, I've always looked thinner than I am just because of the way I'm built and I've, I've always had a little bit more muscle mass. So even, even at my heaviest, people didn't believe that I was actually that heavy. I'm going, the scale is not lying here. I'm just, I'm built different because I'm currently in a size eight. I'm 160 pounds, five, four, like, and I fit in a size eight and not in just one or two items. It's my entire wardrobe is size eight at this point. More than two items that I was like, okay, I'm officially in that size, (laughs) but but I was up to a size 17 and barely fitting into that. Like it was, it was a struggle to find, 
I'm okay and I can see the results. It's a more of a subconscious thing that I, I deal with a lot. Um, and it's and not just in one aspect of my life. There's a lot and it has to do with childhood trauma, the majority of it. I grew up basically Amish and working very, very hard all the time and no education, that sort of situation. So yeah, there's been a lot of, of getting past and moving forward from things that have happened and realizing that that's not who I am and I'm better than that. <laughs> it's, it's a constant struggle for me. It's something I have to constantly remind myself. And even with this new job, I'm now, I'm now a working sales rep and it's a male dominated industry. So trying to bust into that and the storm I'm working is nine months old. I've been in for seven weeks and I've locked in four deals already. I look at it and I'm going, I've done all this work. Like how, how am I not succeeding? And then I look at the actual numbers and I go, most people haven't even gotten their first job locked in. And I've got four. Like I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> I feel bad bragging about my success in worry that other people will feel like I don't think they're pretty or that I don't think that they're doing good, you know, because I've, I've done that in the past where somebody was like, oh my gosh, I'm overweight. And I'm like, I look at you and I'm like, no, you're not like, what's wrong with you? Like, what do you feel about me if you think you're overweight and I'm significantly heavier than you? But then I realized now that I don't view people like that at all. <laughs> and I might feel like I still got some way, some ways to go and my insecurities. And I think that they're perfectly fine the way they are. It is a lot. It's a lot to rewire, right? We have to rewire those years of self-limiting beliefs that no longer serve you have been stored in your brain. And now you're trying to break free free of them. Everything you've ever known. Of course it's difficult. (laughs) Time. And it's going to take effort. And it takes daily effort. I did not become a self-love warrior overnight. Yeah. This has progressed over four years from where I started. Danita can tell you where I started. You know what I mean? I was just this little shy Alaskan girl that was just doing her spring challenge in her group. And I just happened to win and love mermaids. And she's a mermaid booty band. And that was all it took. Somebody acknowledged it. <laughs> Holy shit. You did really great. And you lost all this weight. This is amazing in only two weeks. And just hearing that was enough to spark a fire. Yep. You know what I mean? That was it. That was all it took. And yep. maybe that's all it'll take is just writing some beautiful thing on your mirror that you can look at every day as you look at yourself. You know, another thing I really love to do, I call it naked hour. I get out of the shower and as I'm getting ready, I'm doing my makeup. I'll do my hair, butt ass naked every single day. I'll lock my door so my kids can't come in. But I'm just like, that's my time to love myself, you know? I'm yeah. going to dance in there. And I do it naked because that's... When do we have time to just sit and stare at ourselves in a mirror naked? When? Sure. Never. Exactly. I've never done it before, but now it's my, my favorite thing to do. I, don't, I can't say that I spend a significant amount of time doing that, but I have, I have caught myself like admiring myself more in the mirror naked especially because heck all this craziness and i still got a nice set of tits on me so <laughs> like i got one thing going for me you no, got I all know. the things going for you but I that's just what I you're willing to focus on right now and we will accept that win yep. and as you go yep. more and you do it more and more you're going to start to pick more and more things out about yourself that you yeah. absolutely love and all those things that you say you hate right now you are going to stop hating them yeah. and you are going to start loving them because one of the biggest transitions that I had in my, in my self-love journey was accepting my loose skin. Yep. I have loose skin on my stomach. I've lost over a hundred pounds and it's just there, but yep. I'm thankful. I'm yeah. grateful for my loose skin. It carried my two children to term. Mm-hmm. They were healthy. They were happy. It carried me through the depths of my depression. 
yep. where I wasn't even sure that I was going to survive. Yeah. But my body was like, I got you, boo, and yep. still carried me through it. It's been there for me through thick and through thin, and I abused the shit out of it. And it still carried me on. And it said, we are going to climb. We're going to get to the top of this mountain. You're going to get out of this hole. And that's why I'm grateful because I finally did, because my body didn't give up on me when I already had. And so that's yeah. where my gratitude for my body came from. And that's where my biggest self-love came from, was yeah. saying, thank you. Yeah. Yep. And in the last, honestly, since I brought up my issues to Danita, it's been a couple of weeks now, I've done a lot more looking into it and uh, more aware of of why I think the way I do and that I'm wrong. I need to fix it. Come to, honestly, just over the last couple of weeks, I feel like I've, I've improved drastically in how I'm viewing myself. Seeing those photos next to each other was a big, a big thing for me. I found a couple of random before photos of before I lost all the weight as well. And again, looking at the two separate photos, Looking at them separately, I didn't see it as much. When you stick them right next to each other, you see it everywhere. So I mean, I'm kind of regretting not having taken like the the underwear pictures of before, because there is such a drastic change just in the last, you know, just this year, just since February, and the last 15 pounds. And I mean, honestly, I don't really, I don't really want to lose much more weight. Maybe down to 150 at the most. I don't look healthy after that. I'm. I'm at what my goal weight was a year ago. I hit that goal weight already. You Congratulations. Know, I've, I've hit that goal weight and I am wearing the booty shorts and I'm wearing the cute dresses now and getting attention that's just not what I normally get. A reunion party for my, for my job uh, a couple weeks ago. And just the attention I was getting there was it kind of made me feel uncomfortable because normally I sit in the corner and nobody talks to me and I I didn't even get a chance to sit down the entire night like everybody was talking to me and it kind of felt weird but <laughs> I showed up wearing a dress I was the only person that showed up wearing a dress so <laughs> I'm like I wore that you know short you know mid-thigh dress and and heels and everyone else was wearing jeans and t-shirt and I'm like <laughs> feel a little out of place but I felt really good so that's awesome I don't know. thanks for sharing all this so these are the takeaways I really got from today um something that you shared with us Rebecca is that you're on a journey and different journey than what you've done before a lot of quick fixes and fast trends in the previous past but lately what you've been doing is learning how to speed up your metabolism through that lean muscle mass which is really cool to hear that you're really focusing on that protein and you're seeing that now the weight is coming off and it's staying off what a great way to feel that control which is really awesome so that was a great win the next thing that um has been really beautiful to hear both of you share is just the love for yourselves. I think that's so important on so many different elements of everybody's life, right? Nated so much with this one as even when you do think when you actually reach it to your goals, that this still never actually really ends. We can still so be so critical on ourselves, even with how perfect we actually look, we still can, we still can break ourselves down truly. And so it's really being able to learn that process before you reach your goal, because it's almost like happiness is truly never outside of you. It's always been internal the entire time. There's people that are wealthy, that have the perfect body, that have the perfect relationship, but are still miserable. <laughs> and so it's being able to find that depth within yourself first. And that was truly beautiful to hear. The next one was, um, I think there are definitely some action steps, all right? So this is for everybody that's listening as well, as far as Rebecca too, and even for myself. I don't even have affirmations on my mirror. And so that made me go, oh, crap, I better go grab my marker and go put it on my mirror. But going onto our mirror and just grabbing that marker, don't do a permanent one, you guys, okay? Make sure that it's erasable. Go write something on that mirror today, whatever it is, because you're truly right, Rebecca, when you mentioned, if I'm not enough, 
We're going to feel that I'm not enough. We're going to do the actions of I'm not enough. And then our outcome leads to I'm not enough. And it's just going to be a spiral. And so really grateful that you shared that on today's thing, that mindset really is part of the journey. And so being able to whatever that affirmation is, that part of the affirmations is not even saying it, but we have to start believing it. We have to confirm it within us that we truly are. And you started listing off a bunch of things as far as how you're great at sales and how you're doing all these things in your life. Yes, you you always have been enough. And so continuing to find that proof is part of the process, which you're already doing, which is highly commendable. And then the last thing is being able to find some sort of apparel, whether it's pants, that tank top you were mentioning, something that we can't fit into yet. It's the gold pants, right? We can't fit into yet, but you'll be able to actually beat the body dysmorphia when you can finally put on the pants and button them up and go, wait a minute, that is their milestone. So, um, that's everything that I caught. Anything else that you guys wanted to add to that? I think the only thing that I would have added to the um, jeans is take the before picture. That I way know. you have an accurate memory of what they looked like while they were on your body. And that way you see it. You have the physical item that is measuring you, right? Because we can look at measurements all day long. We can look at a graph, we can look at this and we can see everything going down. But if we can't visualize it, with our yep. own imagery, it's never going to link in here. And until yep. you can link that together, it, you'll always have that confusion. You'll always have that dysmorphia coming through. You'll always see that, oh, where I was at the beginning of my journey, I'm still there. I haven't made any progress and then we're gonna spiral, right? So definitely take a before picture in the gold jeans. It doesn't matter if they can't come up over your hips. It doesn't matter if you can only get them up to your knees. I don't care. Take a picture of them where you're at now. Meet yourself where you're at now. Embrace it. Thank you. I love that. Oh, I love that. Thank you guys for just being vulnerable, showing up in your guys' true self, being able to at different areas of our journey, just being able to share that. And for those that are listening, we embrace you in your journey as well. So if you're having that body dysmorphia, maybe there's one thing you took away from today that really allowed you to take that next step in your self-love journey. So thanks everyone for jumping on your time. So valuable and appreciate it. It was a lot of great wisdom today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbell. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. You have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty Bands and Barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said, that's it. I'm going to make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're going to love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.